Well, it's been a really fun shopping trip and Jocelyn and Kate are headed in and this is our last stop. So will we score at the thrift store? We did well at the antique mall. We'll compare. Here's our sailed colors today. So we've got to keep this in mind as we're shopping. Art challenge, here we go. I'm afraid to fill a cart. I don't have enough room in the car to fill a cart, <laughs> but we'll see. Well, the first thing in this thrift store are women's purses. And of course, certain ones can be big money. So we'll keep an eye out for labels we might recognize. Again, resellers probably could do really well. I mean, I'm seeing cheap prices on Kenneth Cole, but I'm not seeing vintage that I carry. Yvonne Thrifty, Rich, and I always are fans of saying that you look up high if you're tall, because you might see some things in these theme displays that other people might miss. Looks like somebody didn't miss here because I see a big hole. Wow, more purses and more purses. It's amazing the amount of purses in the world. Green purses, purple purses, yellow purses, orange purses. And up here, they've got even more stuff way up high. So we're going to be looking and looking and looking here, I think. Think pink. I think this is going to be pretty contemporary, but we'll take a look. Oh yes, Chinese made. You could kind of tell just by the look from a distance, but it's an interesting shape. They're kind of ripping on what Royal Hager did back in the 1980s. Speaking of the 80s, this has an 80s look. It might be Japanese. It might be American and it might be Taiwanese. It is completely unmarked, but it's very lightweight. So I don't think it's one of the American ones. Treasure Craft made things that look like that in the mid eighties, but it's definitely not theirs. Now this piece looks like it has age. It's got some raised enameling. I would say that this is a ginger jar from Japan, probably in the 1950s that's hand painted, but it is missing the lid. The Italian figures by Capo di Monte of the 70s that were this big soon were copied by Homco. Get it for your home, or in this case, not. <laughs> Don't like the quality of those. This is our first piece that actually is something old and vintage. This is Blue Ridge Pottery. It's in not great condition, unfortunately. Nicely hand painted. They made this from 1935 to 55 in eastern Tennessee. We're going to give this a chance. You never know what you might find in a thrift store, and sometimes there are really great bargains. Old silver plate covered casserole. Let's see who made these. Johann Haviland from Bavaria, Germany. They used Haviland in their name because it made it sound like it was French, but it's not quite as refined and thin as Limoges was. And really nothing like this with the gold rims is selling particularly well right now, so we'll pass on that. Oh, those would be great with succulents. A lot of people are doing that now. Yeah. Oh, that's very cute. And you got a neat piece of Tupperware, so you're finding better stuff than I am. Yeah, that, this was, I remember my grandmother making. Oh, the jello mold. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, good. Well, I'm going to give her my cart. Yeah, you know what? That's what I look for is the old stuff. And here's an old piece right now. This is Fostoria Navarre. And I love the uh, handles on it. It's in really good condition. Oh, you're welcome. I decided to give her my cart because I could tell I wasn't going to fill it. And then, of course, I find something heavy. But I'm going to carry this around because, you know, even though elegant etched glass is not currently super popular, this is a nice pattern. It's in great condition. And I think with the discount, you know, this still probably is a $20 piece. And then over here, this makes it look wrong. We have a new plastic thing in what I believe is an old Victorian cranberry base here. I'm inclined to give that one a chance. Sometimes when things are inexpensive, buy now and do your research later. I'm a little suspicious that it doesn't have more wear on the feet. But cranberry glass takes 24 karat gold to make, so even if it's a 1980s piece that was a reproduction at the time, I still think it's probably cute enough for the price. I seem to remember my mother had this set of dishes in the 1980s and that they were dansk. Yes, that's right. They're the Portuguese dansk. And the Portuguese dansk doesn't sell like the stuff made in France and Denmark does. So I'm not going to go on a nostalgia kick for those. But I like them. It's so funny. I wonder if they split their donations between their stores because this exact same pattern was at the 
Valley Thrift we went to yesterday, and this is our villa by Pope Gosser, China, out of Ohio. Or it could just be that because it was Ohio made and we're in Ohio that a lot of it was distributed here. I've always liked these fly covers for outdoor picnics and things, but it's occurred to me recently to look at the labels and some of these that are a little rougher than the, like this are being made currently in the Philippines. There are older ones too, but these look newer, so I'm gonna pass them. Decent looking cake stand in a press cut pattern. I don't usually do press patterns, but I do like cake stands because they're nice for elevating things and a lot of people use them as pedestals now. This one's $14.99 minus the discount, but because room is limited in my car, I think I'm gonna leave that one today, but I will turn it upright so people can see what its function is. And wow, do they get the donations, or I'm not sure how they get their merchandise actually, but they get a lot. These newer compact disc player deals. Spirit of St. Louis. It was to have the old look, but you can play compact discs in them. And I'll look at the baseball hats again. They certainly get a lot. We're looking for defunct teams. The Cavaliers are far from defunct. We are looking for older ones maybe that have a foam front from the late 70s, early 80s. And we are looking for certain other specialties like ones that are uniforms. This looks like it could be from A&W, but it's not. More ties. I bought a lot of ties that, well, a lot for me, three or four at the place yesterday, but I'm specifically looking for certain materials and made in America, and I don't see any that are that vintage there, except possibly this first one here. Oh, this is a Jerry Garcia tie. Interesting, because it's not one that has any Grateful Dead motif, but there actually are some collectors for these. Jerry Berry's dead, so I think we got to get this one, especially for $1.99 minus discount. So since I gave my card away, I'm going to wear this around my neck while I ask you to please subscribe. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and that way you can click the bell to be notified of future videos. That way we can let you know when we're doing more content like this. We do go thrifting sometimes, and we do find stuff sometimes. We also do a lot of stuff with antique and vintage education, and we love having our viewers with us. Uh, also, if you are interested in memberships, you can take a membership by hitting that join button. And if you want to know more about memberships, go to the memberships link below the dash line in any of our videos, and you can find out more about the perks associated with the different levels of membership, either here on YouTube or on Patreon. I haven't been through the main housewares area. I left Jocelyn to that. and. Kate, I think, went off to look at accessories. But I'm going to take a look and see what's over here. There's a plate from West Virginia from about 1970, I would say. State plates sometimes sell, but that sort of transfer pattern I haven't done too well with. Lots of plastic in here. I think the gal we ran into got the one good Tupperware piece. Well, these are a fancy gold, and if you're going to have a gold rim, you're going to want to really encrust it all over gold rim. So let's see who made these. I suspect these are Ch Japanese, and they are. They are Noritake, and they appear to be pre-war. Looking at that label that says made in Japan. Nice quality. I mean, Noritake got a good reputation in the United States because they made good quality wares, and that's why they're still a big name in production here today. Here's a calendar plate. I like the ones that are Fiesta Wear blanks. They did do some on the Fiesta Wear blanks that are similar to this. Most of these were made by some of the smaller companies here in Ohio. Generally, they sell to people whose birth year is that date. These are American made around 1970. These are Coventry. They're somewhat similar to the patterns that Fiesta put on their pieces to keep the line going for a few more years between 1969 and 1974, at which point Fiesta was discontinued for 12 years. It's hard to believe with the popularity now that Fiesta was ever discontinued, but there was a time it was out of style. Hey, they've got some actual old toys here. A Buddy L, a neat taco fire truck in the middle there. It's missing its ladders. None of these are in terrific shape, but you've got the Michigan there. This is actually a pretty fun collection. We don't usually see things like this in this kind of a thrift store because they generally go to the antique dealers right away. And I think this fellow beat me to it because he's got some really good ones in the cart, especially the two Texaco he's getting for $89.99 less discount. Well, see, there are good things to be found in thrift stores. $59.99 on the middle one. I might well have paid that price for it, so he did well. 
see the road grader as Adams, not Structo. I sold an Adams road grader a few years ago for about $85 in similar condition. Old magazine rack is cute with the little tulip cutouts. I don't find a lot of people buying these now, though, because not that many people are subscribing to magazines anymore. But they're useful for other paperwork and certainly for file folders and things. Got one more in there. I had to congratulate him. He took the Michigan uh, trailer there, too. I think he's buying wisely. The things he's leaving are the things that are a little bit high for the price and condition, but he got some good deals there. Thrift stores are all a matter of timing, you know? He found the great buy right when it came out. And I wish I'd seen it. I would have bought everything that he bought, but you know what? There is always more to be found. And that's part of what makes this fun. Boy, the Polo Lacoste label with the alligator was a big deal. I didn't even play basketball at a certain point, especially in the 80s and 90s. If this was that vintage, I'd be picking it up. Well, since he found great toys up at the front counter, I'm going to take a look and see if there's any chance that any other old toys filtered out of that particular batch and came into the toy section. I don't always look at the toy section, but it probably is a good idea to always look at the toy section, especially after you see something like that come through. Here's a more modern plastic fire truck. And here's a Tonka Dune buggy. Now, see, that's not bad. This is from about my era of childhood. I'm not sure there's any room at it at $30. And it doesn't have any of the pieces in the back, but the overall condition is pretty good. Yeah, if we could just find that plastic top that went on the back, and I am going to look in these stacks and see if there's any chance that it's here, because it's a fair price at the price it is, but it would be a good price if it had that top. If I can't find that plastic top, then I'm going to tell the guy that bought the other pieces that it's back here, and maybe he'll want it, because he may just be collecting, in which case that would be a perfectly fair price. But first, I'm going to see if I can't put it together myself. In the meanwhile, we'll go down the houseware aisles and see what we have. I am not the first YouTuber in the last 20 minutes to go down these aisles, so I'm not sure that I'm going to find anything amazing. But we all look for different things, so you never know. And here are the famous bags of things. Some of these baggies contain pretty good stuff. Jocelyn bought one at the thrift store yesterday and turned around and sold one piece out of it for what she paid for everything in her cart. So I am learning. This thrifting game is definitely a game to be played when you have the time and when you're in a place that has good stuff. This chain of thrift stores seem to have good stuff pretty consistently. Big old enamel canning boiler there. The can well with a little bit of its original sticker. I guess someone didn't like canning very well. A pretty elegant depression candlestick holder. Not one of the patterns that's really well known though. Here's an apple core. These were made up in Maine and this style, back to basics, probably dates to the 70s or 80s. A useful thing though, there's some of that early American press pattern, which we see everywhere. That's cool, but not old. That's trying to be Hummel, but not managing. Well, there's another Tupperware piece and the rust colors are selling pretty well right now. But at $10 and the pink tag I realize now is not on sale today. We're gonna leave that one. Here's one of these shoe buffer things. Back when Paula's shoes were very necessary at work. You could have this do it for you on the way out the door every day. This is about 1970. All right, let's see what else we might have. Sometimes you can see the bag stuff better from the back. Print toner is something I learned from Dom on Primetime Treasure Hunter is something worth buying if you can make sure that it works. But I have some that I bought on that advice and have never sold, so I'll wait till I get that listed first. As primarily an antique and vintage seller, it's a little different for me coming to a thrift store because I'm really looking for a fairly narrow subset of what's in here. But for regular resellers, these places can be gold mines. The dolls look mostly newer. I see Native American styles, and this does seem to have leather or buckskin, but the beading seems cheap and the face is pretty new. So I don't see a customer for that for me. It must be the part of the country we're in because they had a longer burger basket at Valley Thrift in the other location yesterday, and they had it priced pretty high, I thought. And here we are looking at another one, and it's a nice one, but I think because they were made in Dresden, Ohio, not far from here where the 
basket shaped building still stands and is being used by another outfit now. I think they tend to price these really high here. So that is not going to sell for more than that where I sell. Well, they're announcing we have 30 minutes left to shop and I don't think it will take me any longer than that. Crooksville that did this particular portrait plate with the quarters. These were very popular in the late 50s and early 60s, but it's transfer wear and now that hand painted pieces that are similar are selling for low prices. I don't really look for these anymore. And if they're student models, sometimes it's worth picking up old instruments. We're going to gently set this in our cart and take a look at the condition. It's a cheap plastic case. We know this is a student piece. The important thing is it all there, first of all, and this one's missing its mouthpiece. So that means it is a no. It would probably have to have pads replaced but as expensive as instruments are for students now, if you can get something like this, if it was all there at $24.99, I'd probably buy it. Someone could pay $50 or $75 to have it reconditioned, and they would have something for about half the price they're going to pay for a used one at a music store. Let's see who this one is. We see a lot of these around here. We're near Kentucky where the flyway is, and so a lot of birds, and these are hummingbirds. Bird prints can be popular. This one unfortunately got sun. This is why you have to be careful where you hang prints. It got sun in some places and not in others, so now it has a stain. There's our artist signature. These were very popular in the 1970s. Hummingbirds on the sycamore. But in that condition, we're just going to have to leave that one, I'm afraid. Just a simple plate in this fun little daisy pattern by Corel. Only $1.99. That's certainly cheap enough for what it is. If I had more in that pattern right now, I would buy it to add to it. But I'm getting away from doing onesie twosies on dishes because you really don't make a lot of money unless you can sell a set together. Blue Willow. It is still made in Mexico. It is still made in Asia. I don't know if we're making this in the United States anymore. It originally was made in England, but this is Royal China's version of willow wear from the 1950s and 60s. It's a very happy bright blue. A lot of them are a little darker than this. This piece here is a little darker and is by Homer Lachlan, and this is 1940s looking at the date code. This pattern's been around for 200 years, and there are collectors. My aunt collects, but she only wants the ones with the occupied Japan mark. And that's part of the problem is there's so many different variations and they're all similar to each other that finding the one your customer wants, well, you need to know what your customer's tastes are. And if their tastes run to blue geese, well, hopefully they don't want the ones made in China. There were enough of these done in the United States when it was first a fad in the 40 year ago era that we should focus on those first, in my opinion. If you are English, you will realize how ironic and horrible this name is. If you're a fan of English humor in America, you will realize how awful and horrible this name is. For everyone else, I'll let you look it up because I don't really want to discuss it in polite company. Made in China, designed in Italy, those folks really need to have an interpreter help them with their brand names. Another Tupperware. I'm not finding a lot of things on sale right now. The sale tags are not the pink, and right now pink is the current color and the current things are not on sale. I think they turn things over so fast here that a lot of times they're not lasting until sale time. Now this has the shape of a Le Creuset, but it doesn't say it where I can see it, so I'm thinking it's someone else. And there's our label. Yes, it is a Chinese knockoff, and it's $45, so there it will sit. Nothing more 80s than calla lilies, and this is Mikasa. Mikasa was a big name in the 80s, and I keep thinking that more of their stuff is going to start being collectible. We're just starting to get a new generation setting up homes who are interested in fine china again, so they'll grow into it. More baggies, baggies galore of everything you can imagine, and we'll see if there's anything I can imagine owning. But first I want to take a look at this Irish coffee cup because it appears to be advertising for something with an A. It's by Hall China. It's before 1969 because it has the round logo. They changed it to upper and lower case in an oblong logo in 1969. And it was made for the Americana of New York. I think the Americana was a rather fancy hotel. And this is right about the 
time that Irish coffee starts to be popular. There is a collector for these. Two of them new in the box sold for $25. I've only got one, I have no box, but at $4, I'm willing to take a chance on that. It's an interesting rope handle as well. If these are cheap, I should grab them because these old press letters, they go into those old press signs that were used widely in the 1970s and 80s, and I find those a lot, and oftentimes they are missing letters, and it's only $2.99 less discount. So this is the kind of thing that, you know, sometimes you pick things up because you anticipate needing this. I've needed some of these three times in the last two years, and I don't have any, so. I'm going to go ahead and get that. Now, one thing to not do is fill your house with lids waiting for bottoms to match and things like that. I did that for a while and then I ended up donating them all back and realizing that it's really better to buy things that if you can't use it, you can sell right away. Nowadays with eBay, you could probably put a lid online and sell it to someone who needs it today. And I might be able to put those letters online and sell them to someone who needs them today for their reader board. Some silver plate there, missing the lid on the teapot, however. I am not yet ready to start jumping into the silver plate market again. I know some people are starting to do big displays of it, similar to big brass displays. And what I like to see is that not everyone is feeling like they have to polish, 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 because that's what's been keeping people from buying it. Sometimes it's attractive when it goes dark. Early 80s Rubbermaid has not gotten the attention that Tupperware has. I don't know whether it will at some point. But there it is. I remember having that piece when it was new. Here's the Tupperware cake stand. And that's a decent piece, but it's priced more than I want to pay for it. Libby's Gold Leaf and Silver Leaf both were popular in the early 60s when they came out because it was an inexpensive way to adhere these colors to this kind of glass. And I don't see the stems so much. And they are on sale because they're the blue tag and there are enough to make an even numbered set, which I prefer. I know a lot of dealers are buying ones and twos and threes. I gotta tell you, your customer probably wants a set, at least an even number that they can use. I see the gold a lot. I don't see the silver so much. Yeah, I think taking four of these, if I can find four in good condition is the thing to do. Plus I'm saving their life because the, these are all stuck together and someone's gonna pull it out and break it if I don't get it out of here. Well, it's a no-brainer which ones to get because like they used to say on the electric company when I was a kid, one of these things is not like the other and that would be the wheat pattern here. So we'll take the ones with the oak leaves instead. Around 1950, it was very popular to have solid color rims in these medium tones. You'd see maroon, you'd see green. Homer Lachlan did a huge line. But when you pick these up, they're a little bit thinner this one actually had a pattern in the bottom you can't see, probably a wheat shaft. And this is Taylor Smith Taylor's versatile line. Taylor Smith Taylor was a good company, but not as high end as Homer Lachlan. So these were less expensive new and they are less expensive with collectors today. Oh, here's these silly plastic fantastic figures. World's best father. I prefer the ones that are naughty. <laughs> They're more fun. Here are some Mother's Day plates from the 70s. I don't recognize this company. It says Americana Rose. Oh, this is Crown Staffordshire out of England, and they were meant to be hung as plaques. They're certainly bright and festive. Well, the woman has been yelling at us for 30 minutes to check out, which I find really aggravating because we all know to check out. But I am going to go see if there's a jewelry counter, and then I will check out. All right, at the jewelry counter, I see some nice-looking things, but... They all seem more contemporary to me. There is a Fenton bunny in there I'd like to know the price of, so we'll ask about that. So I guess I'm being told this is a decoration and not for sale. I guess that's what I got out of that conversation. Do I scan my own? Yeah. Okay, thank you. You put your phone number or skip? Uh, we'll just skip. Okay. Okay, thank you. It said cash, but I guess I have to use a card. Well, we closed the place down. They certainly do have stuff, and if I'm in Ohio again and have time to go thrifting, well, this would be a place I would come back to. Meanwhile, everyone else is hungry, done, and in the car, so I've got to get going. <laughs> but I guess you can tell by the back end that we've been pretty successful overall.
If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.